high out. I just wanted it to capture that painting because, you know, like the first couple seconds, that's what it grabs. Unless you have editing, and I don't. Hello, if you don't know me, my name is Rhonda, and welcome to my channel. I'm an artist, and I have art on Instagram at RhondaMills67, and on Facebook, I have a page where I do, like, cooking segments and more light-hearted stuff than I do on here and that's called the secret creations and I'm gonna show y'all some paintings today uh, before we get started on story time and I'm going to back you up a little bit so I can show you what we've got going on today all right okay this is one of my favorites. A lot of mine are my favorites. Like, I don't want to sell that one. It's my favorite. Okay. So this, I don't know if I can get the whole thing in. Kind of close, maybe. No. But we'll zoom in. We'll zoom in. So you'll see a fire pit and two Adirondack chairs and a blanket and there's a cup of hot chocolate on that table right there. You can see all the wood stacked. And then we move over here to this side. Somebody's got a chair set up over there for fishing. So, I'm going to leave this one behind me for a backdrop today. There we go. And, well, I guess we'll stay with that color theme for a second. This is another landscape that's got a lot of glitter that I don't know if y'all are going to see this. Um, out here in this light. I will zoom in here. We'll just go past the chair. And then you can see the couple walking down the path. And up here, we have a little critter. Here we have a bench. Okay, and then, so this next one, if you've seen in my previous videos, you know, I have uh, paintings that I do for challenges for me or something that someone wants or a teaching painting, and this is a teaching painting. So if you came to me and you wanted to know how to do like water coming off a cliff or something like that and just some very simple trees and water, I would show you how to do this. I used to teach at a school where they get walked through um, drawing and coloring and um, acrylics and oils and so when they came to my class like something like this would be hanging on the wall and you know they'd have to paint that okay this one I just I loved the colors and I had to do it I don't know if they're gonna come out out here but here we go oh that looks so different on the camera Let's see if I get in closer if it'll be brighter maybe maybe not
All right. So. I, before I went to sleep last night, was thinking, I forgot something, you know, when you do that, you're like, I missed, I haven't done something, there's something, and then I remembered, <laughs> I forgot to do my YouTube video last night, so, hi, I'm here today, I've been very busy today, but I'm out here now, and uh, I'm going to do a Facebook segment here, I hate when I point and y'all can't even see that. The gal are so close, you can't even see me point. Let me see if I can. Maybe. Um, so I'm going to do a cooking segment. Uh, we're going to be doing like uh, oatmeal and chocolate chip cookies in phyllo dough cups with whipped cream on top. And it's just the, uh, the layer of textures that makes it so awesome when you take that bite. Because, you know... Below dough cups are like little tiny, so, you know, you can take a bite. If you're a dude, you're just going to pop one. But if you're a girl, you're just going to take a bite, and those textures in your mouth are so fabulous. I'm just saying, if y'all want to join me, The Secret Creations. Yeah. Okay, so, what I wanted to do was bring you back to where we left off on... You know, we had, we had done pimp number one, and we were transitioning to pimp number two. <laughs> or we had, I don't know, did I introduce y'all to Craigie yet? I wish I was going live so y'all could help me, but I think where we left off, Craigie had talked himself into... Uh, being my new person, you know, because I didn't like that Doc slapped me, remember that. That's where I think we were. Well, you know, it's hard to remember all of that stuff, but especially Craigie, the only thing I really remember is his name, because um, that didn't last but five minutes. I'm not sure if it was... 24 hours, or it wasn't very long, um, and I don't, I don't remember how this started or what happened, but I remember that we were in something similar to like a 7-Eleven, some type of a, you know, just like a neighborhood store, and he was mad at me about something, I honest don't know what happened or why, I just remember he, uh, I didn't expect it because we were inside a store, like a public store, you know, like where there's people. This was way back when there probably wasn't any cameras at all. But, you know, humans. Um, and I remember that he just, he put his uh, hands around my neck and like, you know, had me lifted up off the ground like smashed up against these freezer doors with all those sodas and stuff behind me. And I remember thinking in my head, like there's people in here. This can't possibly go on much longer. Right. Um, like we're in a store. It's just all, you know, very shocking to me cause it's just happening so quickly. Um, and I don't remember leaving that store. I don't remember what happened after that, because I know that I was in Miami, but I somehow got my butt back to Lauderdale. I remember that. And, um, I don't know if I called doc the first one, um, or if I just knew where he was staying or something. I don't remember how I got there. Like I have like a photographic memory, right? So like, I remember, in pictures, like I remember, you know, like scenes in a movie or something. I remember pictures and I remember talking to him in this open, you know, I remember him coming out of a door and we were like in an open porch way or something and him being confused about why I came back and then me explaining it to him. And I was 
trying to tell him like I didn't want to be doing that like I wanted to go back to dancing or whatever but at this point I had lost my place to live um I don't think that that girl or lady lived there anymore I don't think I was able to go back there for some reason or obviously I would have um so um I know that I was trying to get get like get him to you know set me up with a place to stay until I could get on my feet and figure something out and I I don't know if he sent me I don't know if I was dancing but ultimately he said you know because I was on Biscayne Boulevard in Miami and he was saying we need to just get you out of that neighborhood and you need to so he took me to downtown Miami and like all the high rises and all that stuff and he's like you know it'll be better over here and blah 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 and I'm pretty sure that it was the first night that he put me out there um, a car approached and um, this person it's like a scene out of a movie this person knew like things about me like where I had been he could just tell me different things about um, you know where I was and he said he'd been watching me and it kind of creeped me out but intrigued me at the same time because this person happened to be um, uh, attractive um, and obviously um, had money like this and didn't look to be a pimp in any sort of way and I remember that he took me to this there's this place that you could rent by the hour right and they were crazy rooms you know like one would be all red or one would be all yellow and you know they had like round beds or heart-shaped beds and um, just really <laughs> crazy environments um, but I remember that he took me there and that he paid for the room and paid for whatever it was I charged him, I don't know, and never wanted to do anything with me. He just wanted to talk. And so, um, you know, we did. And I told him what was going on with the other two people. And uh, he said that... Um, he would take me out of that situation and I was like no you don't understand you know and I was explaining to him about territories and all that stuff and he was like no you don't understand um, and so ultimately what I came to find out is that I don't know what to call it like right now it might be called a gang or something right then I was thinking mafia Cuban mafia of some sort um, I, he had like, he had given me bodyguards and so they like watched me all the time. Um, they were nice. They were both Cuban and, um, you know, they would cook for me or if I needed anything, like they'd walk to the store with me or go get something for me. Um, just so that I was kept safe um, because of the close proximity to, you know, the other people and territories and blah, 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 and all that stuff. And um, I remember that in the beginning, um, he would put me in hotels. This was before, before the bodyguards. In the beginning, he would put me in hotels and... Um, you know, tell me to go do what I normally would do, but I didn't want to do it. Um, and I think that ultimately, I don't know, to break it down in some weird way that he had like, let's say a crush on me or something and took mercy on me or something and decided to just like, 
um, you know, feed me and all that stuff without having me do anything. And then that's when I got like the bodyguards and we were like in an apartment. Um, and I would go with him sometimes places and, you know, he always made me stay in the car, but, um, you could tell like by the way he came out, like something criminal was involved and he never wanted to discuss things with me because I would like dig and try to find out and he would, you know, he wasn't going to share any of that information with me. And, uh, uh, that ultimately, how much time do I have that ultimately? And, oh, so what happened? I know what happened. I remember now. So we were staying, um, we were staying in a motel. Um, I don't know why this was after the apartment. Maybe we didn't stay in that apartment very long or something. I'm not sure because we were there for a while. I mean, I, I don't know, like a month or so, but we were staying in this room and I remember one of the guys' names was Alex and I can't remember the other guy's name, but I wrote a story like a really long time ago where I wrote down details. So somewhere I have written down what all their names are. Um, I know their first and last names and I've thought about it over the years, but then you think about like how old I am and how old they would be. And they're either not here anymore or they're old enough to not do anything to anybody anymore. But, um, this particular man, let's call him Chino, um, never laid a hand on me. Like he was not, he was not that kind, um, not that kind of person. Um, anyway, I remember I told, we were talking one day and we had become close, like these bodyguards, you know, that's all we did was be with each other all day. And they started asking me questions and I told one of them the truth, you know, like that I was 16 and that I took off, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And ultimately he told Chino and Chino was like, you got to go. Like, I can't, mm -mm. <laughs> you know? And, uh, I was like, okay. Um, so I didn't have that much money and I was staying at this inn. You could stay at these inns that were actually probably really neat back in the day, you know, like back in the fifties or something, maybe even the forties, they might've been like the Shangri-La because they were pretty neat, like with the really tall ceilings and lots of crown and lots of stuff going on. And you would have these big, huge spaces. Like the room I was staying in was maybe, I don't know, like, I don't know, 600 square feet or something, maybe 800 square feet. I mean, it was a big space and it had a living room and a kitchen. Now the bathroom is in the hallway and you have to share the bathroom with other people. That's the part that sucks because especially if like both bathrooms on a hall or taken up or whatever, but, um, but it's really cheap to stay at an inn. Like, I mean, it was probably like $12 a night or something like that. And you get this, all this space. It was unbelievable. I was staying there and this is when I started working at La Pig Alley. I know it sounds horrendous, but if you Google it, which I Googled it the other day to make sure that it's not still open, um, it talks about, you know, what the definition of that is. I'm just going to let y'all Google that if you want to, but it was not just a topless bar. Like it had a long, um, a long stretch, almost like a runway. And some of the girls did like, um, I don't know, like magic or something. And some would do like one's character would be a belly dancer or something. And then somebody else did something else. You know, they were all, Everybody had like their own like shtick going on. It wasn't just about the dancing. And at one time, this was supposed to be some wicked famous place 
for like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all those people used to come to this place. Yeah, and I heard all the stories about it. And the dressing rooms were neat because you had your own private de dressing room. All the other ones that I'd been in before is like one big large room and then everybody just, you know, picks a spot where is there an empty chair to stick in. And this one was like your own dressing room. Like that was, it was all yours. That was like a big private deal to me. I thought that was really neat. I mean, you got to find the rainbow, right? Like, so that would be a rosy spot. Like, oh, this is a nice place to put makeup on. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of stories about La Pig Alley. So I don't want to get too deep into it, but just to leave you off somewhere. Um, one night Chino walked into La Pig Alley. You know, he had told me to leave Miami and uh, I didn't leave Miami because I was working, trying to get the money to leave Miami. Um, but, and this is also going to lead into another story. Uh, I, I'm not even going to give you the lead in now. Or maybe I should. Let's just say in the future, we're going to talk about Jimmy Hoffa. I'm serious. Um, that was a really connected place where I was working. Like I, being from up north, I'd already been around, uh, you know, the block enough times and seen enough movies and recognized like, you know, you know, you know. Uh, well, I mean, if you're from up north or something, maybe, maybe if you've never grown up in that kind of environment at all and you've only seen the movies, you don't know. But, you know, you like, you can almost feel it like a vibe when somebody walks in the room, you're like, mm. yeah, they've got friends, you know, you know what I mean? Like there's just a, you can tell, but anyway, that's where I'm going to leave y'all. I'm going to leave y'all right there. And we'll pick that up in the next video. And I'm going to go in there and make some cookies. And if y'all want to follow me in there, I'll be on the secret creations. And I will also see you tomorrow. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, get the little bell so you know when I'm coming on and share and, you know, all that fun stuff.